Well, hi kids. Reillusion has released Headshot 2. It's a paid plug-in and a paid upgrade, assuming you bought Headshot 1. Personally, I never got much use from Headshot 1. Uh, I don't really like the weird pasted-on photo face that doesn't quite blend and that never looks right to me. I also never use the Headshot Speed Morph overlay thing. I don't honestly know what they even call this. It's to allow you to manipulate the headshot morphs by dragging directly on the face. It's an okay feature, I guess. It lets you be a little more hands-on. Uh, but I really love the headshot morphs. I use, the, uh, I use them on every figure. Now, when I make my characters, I usually have an idea what they're supposed to look like, at least their ethnicity and age, and how generically attractive they are supposed to be for the story. And I'm willing to take the time to dive into the 1,000 or so morphs and tweak the details. But admittedly, it's an ongoing process. I don't always see what needs to be changed until I watch the figure animated, and that's basically the whole reason this channel exists. I can see my figures in action and refine them. Now I get why most people would not want to tweak 1,000 morphs, uh, but they really are well organized and have used them enough that I now have a pretty good idea of what they can and cannot do. Believe it or not, even with 1,000 morphs, there are still holes in the face that we just can't control. There'll never be enough morphs to do everything. Generally, you need to start with a sculpt or an all-over character morph, like the stylized characters on Reillusion's content store, and then use morphs to individualize them. Now, Character Creator has a mesh editor, and to their credit, these tools are not terrible. I'm happy they're here. But, of course, they are not full sculpting tools. You can't sculpt a figure from scratch, and you cannot create clothing or hair. It's more like, it's more like just moving around the existing vertices. All right, so why do I tell you all this other stuff before I talk about the new Headshot plugin? Well, it's because the new feature is a 3D mesh wrapper. It wraps the CC3 Plus head or just the face, and maybe the face with the ears, depending on how you select it, around any head mesh that you can import. And I'll talk about the actual plugin in a few minutes. But you're probably really wondering just the basics. Is this any good? More specifically, is it worth the price? And the short answer is, yeah, I guess, if it fits your workflow and your budget. It's real illusion, so there are trade-offs. Like a lot of their stuff, you can get pretty good results without much effort, and they've made the process easy and mostly painless. I bumbled my way through without a tutorial. But if you have, if you already create your own figures, you probably have professional tools like R3DS Wrap or the Z-Wrap plugin in ZBrush, and I think Blender has several wrapping plugins. And you already know that wrapping the mesh is only part of the process. You also need to transfer the diffuse texture, probably bake a new normal map, and then you need to get it imported as a morph into Character Creator, and there, there are issues. Um, I, I still don't know how to get rid of this nag window reminding me to save my custom morph somewhere. Somewhere in the Reillusion labyrinth of their folders. <sighs> now, and also, you, know, you need to understand, no wrapping software is perfect. I use 3DS Wrap, and after ZBrush, it's probably the best tool for the job. But I still need to hit individual vertices with the sculpting tools. And it's called foreshadowing because it's going to happen here too. Now, before Reillusion updated their blend shapes in Character Creator 4, I was making my AR kit blend shapes in wrap. And it's a process to make sure all the vertices are aligned and all the blend shapes are smooth and adjusted to fit this face. There's no shortcut if you're making your own content to sell as a professional product. You'll have a studio of other software that can do this better 
and more completely and you'll need to check every single blend shape to fix weird vertices that's just how it is i'm telling you so you can understand the value here and i do think there's a really great value here so basically it's awfully convenient to have 80 percent of the workflow inside character creator even if you're only getting 80 percent results i take that with a grain of salt now i'd rest estimate that my wrap process and the in exporting and importing and blah blah that takes a few hours at minimum assuming the blend shapes mostly fit so i can reuse my wrap scenes and plug in a new sculpt and that's not including baking the normal maps from the high poly sculpt in something like 3d coat that's another piece of software but i made this guy that you're looking at in about 15 maybe 25 minutes without having used the plugin before now i had a general idea of course what i needed to do and i'm using other assets that i purchased from real illusion to finish the job with the skin and the hair and the wrinkle maps those are all other purchases so my review is Headshot 2 is a huge time saver. Uh, honestly, I don't use wrap unless I have to because the workflow is a time suck. And I don't want to lose the entire day going through each step in the process. And it's what they call a waterfall workflow. If I need to go back and adjust the wrap, I have to go back to the beginning and do all the imports and exports again. You can't swim up the waterfall. It only goes one way. So I even need to rebake the maps because they just hit differently on the adjusted vertices. Now Headshot 2 is obviously easier and there's no import export nightmare. The figure is already in character creator rigged and ready to use but your end results you know the final figure that's what really matters that's gonna vary based on how invested you already are in the character creator ecosystem if you have the skin and the wrinkles and the body morphs because this is only wrapping the head well, let's face it, this gets expensive to have all the bells and whistles added on. But being able to wrap the, the CC3 Plus head mesh around another 3D figure or a head scan or a sculpt like you can buy on ArtStation or CG Trader for a few dollars, this will level up your character options. Now, even if the end results are not quite professionally perfect, there's a trade-off for how many figures you could get done in a day. If you already have Headshot 1 and you barely use it, or not at all, like me, then the 3D wrap is the only new feature in Headshot 2, and it's just the head. You have to use the standard body and add morphs, and then match the skin. And if there are issues in the blend shapes because the head is so stylized or just not a human head to begin with, you might feel frustrated by character creators mesh editor tools that's why i mentioned that vertice cleanup is a normal part of the final polish you should always expect to do some cleanup on the mesh especially after you add the blend shapes that's normal now the reality is headshot is not competing against wrap and blender it's competing against unreal's metahuman and they've had head wrapping tool for a while and as far as I know, MetaHuman is free, but I can't compare it to that tool because it's only for Unreal, so I have not used it. Now, where does Headshot 2 fit in your workflow? Well, it can, it can replace a suite of more expensive wrapping and texture baking software, but not quite to the same professional standard and features. However, the quality is very good. I'm saying 80%, but that, that's not a real number. I'm, I'm, I'm not even saying I would do the extra 20% to polish my own figures because I'm lazy, even if I have all those tools. It's a pain. So if I can cut corners, I will. And no one has time to master all the tools in this process. It's worth it for me 
because it does everything those other, well, not because it does everything those other programs do, but because there are a lot fewer steps and I'm using the figure in a fraction of the time. Now, a simplified tool that I will use is better than a more complicated set of tools that I'm avoiding because the workflow is an all-day commitment. For me, that makes Headshot 2 worth spending money on. Um, this is basically an upgrade for my entire character creator ecosystem. So let's talk about some negatives. Uh, Headshot 2 is a paid upgrade from Headshot 1. I had to buy it again. That's a negative. <laughs> the old 2D stuff is still there, but I don't really see them working together. You'll either start with a 2D image or a 3D mesh. I don't really see you combining these two workflows. Now, maybe Headshot 2 could have been Headshot 3D, a separate plugin. I'd still have to pay for it. Uh, and the other weird thing, okay, this is a negative. The plugin doesn't install through Reillusion's hub thing. I spent like half a day looking for it, trying to figure out why my headshot didn't automatically upgrade <laughs> before I realized I had to download it and install it manually like a Neanderthal. I guess it's a pretty minor complaint, but the old plugin is still here too. So now I have two plugins called Headshot. And they both have the 2D texture function. Why? Why, Reillusion? It's weird stuff like this. It makes you wonder if Reillusion is paying attention to their own software. You know, can I even uninstall the old plugin? How does that work? It's just more clutter, like all these stupid buttons up here for software I don't own, like Substance Painter. Why is this here? Why does it take up so much space? These are questions that Real Illusion will never answer. <laughs> I think it has to do with payola. But whatever. The other big negative, maybe more legitimate, is the lack of bodies. And uh, honestly, I think this is also the case with MetaHuman. You're just doing heads. Now, technically, in Character Creator, there is a body. But it's the default body. And uh, you, well, okay, you can pick male or female or neutral. To get you started but you can't wrap the body of your original full body 3d figure to get that i'd need to go back to wrap and wrap the full figure and then import it as a body morph all right i'm gonna admit i actually stopped doing custom bodies on my figures what i really want is the face and that takes long enough. So I, so the face is where I put all my efforts, the face and the blend shapes. Now I was doing bodies and I actually stopped doing this back when I was using Adobe Fuse. The reason to reuse the body and the generic rigging is to reuse the available clothing and textures and accessories. That's the point of having a content library of generic clothing and hair in the first place. You want to use it on a lot of figures. So when you have, like, for instance, a heavy custom body, like an obese person, all the clothing gets stretched, the buttons get stretched, things that should not deform become weird, belt buckles. Uh, sometimes even, you know, clothing gets broken or folded along a joint. And it's the clothes that I am seeing 99% of the time, usually not the custom body under the clothes. So yeah, I feel a little ambivalent because I think it's easier to use a custom head with a generic body. All my people are human and they're not over stylized. This works for me, it's just easier. Now, of course, that does not help you if your figures have very stylized bodies, but a stylized or alien or extreme body needs custom clothing, probably custom textures too. The generic clothing, which is usually created to fit the neutral body, becomes less and less usable the more and more customized the body shape. So this is another trade-off. If you want to use pre-made clothing, you need to stick closer to generic bodies. 
You don't have to take my advice, but that's just where I'm at. Now the flip side is there are a lot of body morphs available if you want to buy them. So you're not limited to just generic male, female, and neutral. You can, of course, apply body morphs. Um, but in reality, that clothing is going to stretch and deform anyway. And you'll need to spend some time with the mesh tools smoothing and shifting the vertices. I'm not saying this is a solution. I'm saying you will be doing some re-sculpting either way. If you want these like perfect 100% polished figures. So depending on what you can put up with being unpolished, you know, <laughs> you do you. Now, if you have a truly unique body like an alien, or a centaur, you know that's never going to happen. You're not making a human figure anymore. You're kit bashing, you're rigging, you're doing a lot more work that's a completely original texture. That's not an automated process. That's a professional job that requires professional tools, a whole suite of professional tools. It's not a plugin, not an automated plugin. So headshot two, it is what it is. You either want to use generic bodies and morphs for compatibility with an existing content system, or your figure's body is just so unique and therefore not compatible with generic morphs and clothing. You know, I'm not gonna argue with you about if this is a big broken missing feature and you're so disappointed. You can still export the body once you've done the headshot you can export the body as OBJ and re-sculpt it, wrap it, whatever you want. The body is low poly and that's the easy part. Grab the vertices with the existing tools, mesh editor, move them around, go to town, be my guest. <laughs> it's the face that has all the detailed vertices, well, face and hands, I suppose. The face needs to match the blend shapes and the face has to hold other meshes like teeth and beards and eyelashes and eyebrows and eyeballs. Now that's not so easy in RAP, the super professional software. I have a really old tutorial showing how it's done and it's so many steps. And that is the industry professional software. So headshot two, is doing the hard part. It's wrapping the face, but not the body. It is what it is. So I'm not complaining. I hear you if you want to complain about it, but I'm not that sympathetic because it's just a lot more work and I'm glad that I can get this done quickly. 